Hi, thanks so much for having me here today. It's a real honor and a pleasure um, to be here. Um, I will talk briefly about what impact is and how it came about, and hopefully you can talk a lot more about it through, um, through your questions, which I look forward to. Um, so yeah, uh, I work, yeah, as, as was mentioned, for a company called Idea Couture, and one of the disciplines we practice is sort of a, an innovation consultancy. Um, companies come to us to help them uh, figure out and strategize on what is new and emerging, what's on the horizon for their, their company, basically sort of anything and, and within the realm of new, we, we, we kind of cover that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of teams, I won't get into all of them, but the team um, that I'm co-leading is the Foresight team. Um, so that team is basically charged with longer term futures, thinking about where organizations are going, um, sometimes 15 years out or further, far beyond the sort of typical three year planning cycle that you see from most, uh, from most big companies. Um, one of the projects we've done Actually, I should talk a little bit more about foresight as a discipline. Strategic foresight um, is a is a is a sort of uh, 20th century discipline for thinking about the future. I prepared a short definition here on the uh, on the screen that I think will function, and we won't have time to get too much depth about it. Who here is familiar with foresight? Okay, more than almost any other room. <laughs> we'll walk into. Um, a systematic approach for thinking about the future, um, a discipline for sensing, understanding, anticipating, and exploring change and potential impacts on, on a given system. Um, a system could be a society, a, a market, uh, an organization's sort of operating environment, um, or an individual's life. There's sort of, you, you can sort of apply it um, to any of these. Um, we do that sort of at the beginning of that process. We look at what we call weak signals of change. A weak signal of change, something that we observe out in the world that we think um, seems meaningful to and may be impactful in the system that we are looking at. Um, and we may not be sure exactly how, but we, we gather those and cluster them, look at the cross impacts, look at how these weak signals of change interact with one another and think about the difference possible futures that could emerge and what types of opportunities could emerge for, you know, if it's an organization that we're working for, what kind of threats might be on the horizon as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, we go through a number, of, it's a number of different methods that we use, including scenario planning, um, wind tunneling is a, a, a fun sort of method to explain. It's a term borrowed from aerospace engineering. Um, Basically, this is the idea of putting an entity, this could be, say, a potential strategy through a number of different possible future scenarios. Um, and, you know, seeing is, it, is this going to be tenable among, you know, many of these. So, in our preferred future is the plan that we have set for ourselves going to work in um, the opposite of our preferred future as it hold up and, and among several other sort of scenarios. Um, this is the type of thinking we're doing, sort of cliche among foresight strategists or futurists is um, that foresight is about uh, uh, preparing rather than predicting and sort of as someone, if you introduce yourself as a, as a futurist or a foresight strategist, the first thing people say is, you know, uh, so what's going to happen, what's the future of this, what's the future of that, and, and, and the answer is sort of, it's, it's not really the point. The point is to be thinking sort of critically and creatively and sort of prevent surprise in that way or be able to create, you know, um, positive surprises. Um, so enough of that. I will get into impacts. Um, a few years ago now, I got sort of the most interesting um, briefs, design briefs of my career, and it came from a group called Policy Horizons Canada. Does anybody know Policy Horizons Canada? few of the people who knew what Foresight was. So Policy Horizons Canada is a group that, among other things, does some um, research into the future of Canada. And uh, they are based in Ottawa, they're a crown corporation, and um, they've done several studies about, you, can, you should definitely go to their website, by the way. I think this audience would really appreciate it. A lot of their studies are available. You can download them. They're really interesting PDFs um, about what they're looking at and kind of doing what I, what I was just talking about, looking at what's sort of emerging, what are the forces of change, what are the weak signals of change, and how may they influence various sort of domains of society um, that are important to policy, hence, hence the name Policy Horizons Canada. Um, they came to us 
um, after we'd sort of been talking to them for a while with um, a question, could you design a board game that helps public servants to think, um, to, to sort of learn foresight, to, think, to be better at thinking about the future and understanding um, implications of change, emerging change on, um, on, on, on policy horizons, on policy futures. Um, some people there didn't think it could be done, so uh, the, the challenge wasn't even totally genuine, I learned. Um, but uh, we were up for the challenge, and uh, impact is, is the product of that. Um, i quickly talk about sort of the stakes and, and premise of the game and the background. Um, impact is a game where you are given at the start of the game a, uh, a job from the future. Um, you get a distinct job from the future card. Um, that might be an AI whisperer is one of the jobs from the future. Um, security synthesis is another one. Uh, Martian migrator is another one. Um, and with that job from the future, you have a sort of preferred future world that you need to create. That is your win condition. Um, that's, that, that preferred future is expressed by three numbers next to three symbols. Um, and the board, as you can see, is made up of uh, ten symbols. Each one represents a different sort of policy domain, a different domain of society. So those are things like uh, energy, natural resources, home, security, manufacturing, services, agriculture, medicine, work, um, uh, transportation, uh, so forth. So um, you need to create a certain amount of change to three of those domains um, to, to, to win the game, to create the world that is good, where your job is prosperous and your job is secure. Um, that's, that's the object of the game. And you do this by playing what are called um, impact cards. And you have a hand with a few impact cards uh, throughout the game. And an impact card is basically comprised of a weak signal of change. And that's a real thing that happened in society. So you will learn about emerging technology when playing the game. Um, and those weak signals of change are based on a study the Policy Horizons Canada did. So it's, um, it's a study called Metascan 3 that they did on emerging neuro, nano, bio, and uh, digital technologies. Um, it's one that is downloadable on their website. Um, and it looks at how exactly those four sort of different technology categories influence the uh, 10 different uh, domains of society on the board. Um, so the card has a weak signal of change. It's a fact, a thing that happened in the world, a technological event. It could be a uh, news story about uh, a patent. It could be a patent that was filed, or it could be uh, a university publishing a news story about a new kind of microcomputer that they developed, or um, some sort of technological breakthrough. It could be a new startup. It could be a, uh, it could be a new policy or something like that. Um, they all sort of, the most sort of emerging technological ideas that we could find and sort of between 2014 and, and now when they were doing this, doing this study. And we supplemented it a little bit. Um, from, from the study they had with some additional research. That card is followed by two speculative um, sort of uh, impacts, two speculative events. So these are fictional things. And these are the impacts. And they're tied to different uh, number of cubes which are moved around the board. You basically play by moving these cubes around the board, playing these cards, creating that preferred future. Um, in between rounds <laughs> in this game, uh, you're asked to do something that is that's sort of important that is um, you, you will have at the end of a round, each person will play four technological events. And at the end of the round, one player is the judge, and the rest, in a sort of Cards Against Humanity style, uh, are asked to synthesize those four technological events that were played over the course of the round and come up with a headline from the future. Um, this is a very important sort of part of the work we, we do um, when we're doing foresight research. Like we, we, we're first okay, looking and taking basically inventory of change that's occurring that seems like it's relevant. But then thinking through it and trying to understand, okay, what kind of world does this create? Um, and so by creating a headline of the future, some hindsight examples would be like a summer of love, um, arguably very much the convergence of a bunch of technologies, uh, including you know things like uh, birth control and arguably uh, the electric guitar, um, and obviously a whole bunch of political and social so sort of events and signals and, and driving forces as well. Uh, another would be, you know, the age of mechanical reproduction, um, the, you know, um, the Renaissance. These are all sort of headlines of an era, and you either write it like that or write it like an actual sort of newspaper headline. But again, point being, taking these sort of 
four very disparate, some seemingly unrelated um, events that occurred over the course of an, of an era, which could be from anything from a summer to a, a century, and and sort of naming that, and that becomes kind of shorthand for a scenario to say, like, what is that world like? And that sort of sparks up a lot of interesting conversation over the course of the game. Um, I think I'll stop there, I've sort of explained it. Um, I'm really happy to talk about the process of designing it. I'm really happy to talk about whatever you guys want, but I will stop there and, and open it up to questions. Uh, you win by creating your preferred future on the board. So, like as I, as I mentioned, like on your card, you've got three numbers next to three symbols, and you need to get that number of cubes. And you do that by playing these cards that have different speculative sort of impacts on the board and moving cubes around accordingly. Yeah. Well, now you said you made the board game initially so that you could teach people working policy. Mm -hmm. so, are you happy with the results of that? Like, has it been effective? Uh, yeah, anecdotally, we haven't measured it in a sort of like scaled way, but. Um, ways, anecdotal ways that I can tell you. Um, Peter Padbury is the chief foresight um, person who was sort of involved and was, was our not a day to day client, but uh, one of them uh, was in his stakeholder interview extremely skeptical. <laughs> Didn't think it could be done, said I'd seen people try to do games like this in the past, don't think it could be done. We sort of got the job because somebody else was uh, sort of pushing the thought that someone else believed in the, in the project, I guess. Um, and at the end of the sort of thing, having played it, he was like, oh, I think you did it, I think this did it for a So that's from, that's from a sort of leading practitioner uh, <laughs> as evidence. Um, and it's been used um, in Ottawa, it's sort of, uh, I, I believe it's been uh, played by the Privy Council, it's been mm -hmm. definitely played uh, by the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development here um, in Ontario, so, and it's been, um, I didn't mention too much about the story. We we actually uh, after sort of delivering it to um, to Policy Horizons Canada, we wanted to um, make this game accessible to to everyone, and, and that's something that's personally very important to me is sort of getting um, you know non uh, you know sort of non government, non engineer, just people who don't necessarily engage with this stuff on a daily basis. Because I really believe these types of decisions that we make constantly about technology should be made by everyone. Um, getting them thinking about it and, and you know the literacy is not something that everyone has, and I think it's uh, something that's really important for people to have. So we ran a Kickstarter campaign. Um, we were able to to, to fund it, our uh, twenty thousand bucks, and and at the game, and a lot of people showed that there were a lot of people interested. And there's a lot of those people were from various governments all around the world, from. Uh, you know, Edmonton to Northern Ireland to Singapore to Brazil, um, Germany, like it was really across the globe. Um, so there's uh, quite a bit of use, and the feedback has been, I would say, like 95% really positive. People seem to like it and, and find it effective. Yes? Do you like demo in like public spaces, like the public library and maker spaces? Um, I will commit to demoing here if there is demand uh, <laughs> in the future. Um, I haven't, uh, I didn't bring enough copies or, or sort of facilitators and things like that today, but I, mean, I know everyone has other projects to be working on, but um, yeah, I think if that's what was behind that question, yeah, I, I, would, I would like to. Um, we have done a few things like that, yeah. um, but... Because you're talking about reaching out beyond governance. So yeah, totally. Like, well, it, what, what it, yeah, well, it's available, so anybody can, can purchase one. Um, okay. You can get it at idiacouture.com slash impact if you missed the Kickstarter campaign. Um, you can email me and I'll send you a print and play version if you prefer. Uh, um, and that's at no cost. Um, and uh, But yeah, I'm pretty uh, responsive to, to the people who are interested in doing my best to take the time to get out and play um, You know, with whoever wants to. Yeah. Sorry, one more question? Sure. Um, you probably did point this out, but I'm just asking it again. How did you decide on the different factors? Was that based on policy horizon? Yeah. Um, like, how did you decide transportation, yeah. services, all of these headings? Yeah, they were uh, they were based on um, this document called. I'll show it to you, so that if you want to take it down or anything. Thank you. Uh, there, Metascan three on emerging technologies. So the the way that that was set up was. Four sort of technological cate categories, which were neural, nano, digital, and biotech. 
how do those influence 10 um, policy domains, which were the ones on the board. Okay. Yeah? So as long as you keep things allowed, on the design and a little more. So you mentioned that initial, initially there was some uh, kind of doubts about that, but eventually it worked. Yeah, yeah. So how do you measure that? Or like what makes uh, working successful to work? Mm -hmm. um, so it was, felt like that was two questions. Are you more interested in the process or? Uh, I guess we are sort of have to measure one already. So. I see them related. You can measure the Sure. I'll, uh, I'll talk process and I'll show you a little bit while we're at it. Um, it's, I, I think a really interesting uh, start to the project was we did a game hackathon uh, in Ottawa, Policy Horizons Canada. Um, something that we prepared for that. I, by the way, am not a huge uh, board game person. I don't, I don't have this sort of like. The background. I had a, a, a person on my team, John Wither, who really knows his board games, and um, you know he was he was actually a strategist, not on not on the foresight team, but we brought him in on this and sort of taught him the fundamentals of foresight. So things like wind tunneling, what I wish I described before. We basically had him to have create a inventory of foresight principles and methods, and. Looked and we basically had him bring in games that we played and looked at where there was a game mechanic that was somehow aligned or could not turn that sort of foresight principle or mechanic into something teachable. So, for example, any um, sort of game, like the wind tunneling, any sort of game where you need to construct, say, a castle for unpredict many different possible unpredictable conditions that may occur within a game, sort of doing the job of teaching something like wind tunneling where you might have like a strategy or creating a product or something like that and seeing does it work in the, these different sort of world conditions. So basically did that for, I think it was like 25 or so, again, principles or methods, like aspects of, of strategic foresight, um, and presented that as, as sort of a tool. Um, so these are some like, like a, it's kind of ID, like a, a way to kind of kickstart like ideas within this, within this hackathon. So people use that, and we just brought in a whole bunch of stuff like you know just game game stuff dice cards etc and have people hack, hack games from there we um, sort of left with what we learned what we saw that day and refined three games presented them back um, they picked impact which at the time I don't think even quite looked like I think this is what we signed as the prototype yeah for this one and then there was just a lot of, of playtesting involved uh, to get it right uh, we were fortunate to have access to some really interesting humans that I did the tour, so we brought in a, a data scientist at some point to help with how long the duration of the game, making sure that it was fair, the sort of mass uh, aspects of it. Um, yeah, a lot of very stressful creative play testing that we, we were doing. Um, yeah, that's, uh, and, and that was kind of until we kind of finally finally got there, got the process. Uh, yes? So, not being a board game person, mm -hmm. having to play all of these board games and then build a board game. Yeah. Are you in? Did this make it more interesting to play interesting board games? Or are you like this is not my jam? Uh, <laughs> I think it was like, sort of the type of person that's like interested in, in, in interesting things and non-interesting things. So I think like it wasn't a. I, I don't feel like it's not my jam. Sort of um, pretty much where I started, which is like. Interested, but not the most active. Yeah, um, yeah, sort of something I was always like intrigued by. But you only have so much time to, yeah, dedicate what you, what you dedicate to what you do and learn about. Yeah. Yes. Have you used uh, Impact to create real scenarios with clients, or used as a, you know, as a starting point in engagements De or anything? Definitely as a starting point, um, and it's. Amazing! Well, it's like amazing how effective it is. The more people play, like I actually find now, I've played it probably as much or more than anyone, and I've gotten a lot better at writing headlines um, over the course of it. To the point where, you know, this like quick headline that you're doing normally is much long, more of a sort of process that we would do for a client. I often I'm like, well, that's like a really interesting neologism that I should like keep and maybe use in a paper or something like that. You know, so like it, it just by my own judgment of like, did I come up with anything, you know, worth remembering? Uh, it, I've come a long way. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks very much, guys. It was a real honor to to present here and for this one. Thank you.